Hi, boys and girls. We're going to continue with reading Ramona and her father. We're going to read chapter five, Beezus's Creative Writing. All right, so I want you to listen to see if you can find out what idea Mrs. Swink gives to Ramona. And I also want you to find to listen to find out who is Mrs. Swink. So let's listen. The Quimby women, oh, and if you remember before I start, Mr. Quimby had just promised to try to stop smoking. So let's see if he's able to do that. The Quimby women, as Mr. Quimby referred to his wife and daughters, were enthusiastic about Mr. Quimby's decision to give up smoking. He was less enthusiastic because after all, he was the one who had to break the habit. Ramona took charge. She collected all her father's cigarettes and threw them in a garbage, slamming down the lid with a satisfying crash, a crash much less satisfying to her father, who looked as if he wanted those cigarettes back. I was planning to cut down gradually, he said, one less cigarette each day. That's not what you said, Ramona informed him. You said you would try to give up smoking, not try to cut down gradually. There followed an even more trying time in the Quimby household. Out of habit, Mr. Quimby frequently reached for cigarettes that were no longer in his pocket. He made repeated trips to the refrigerator looking for something to nibble on. He thought he was gaining weight. Worst of all, he was even crosser than he was when he first lost his job. With a cross father, a tired mother, and a sister who worried about creative writing, and a cat who grudgingly ate his puss pudding. Good afternoon. Ezra Langer, students and cohorts A and C only will report to school in person on Monday. At this time, all ECC walkers may be dismissed. Okay. Ramona felt she was the only happy member of the family left. Even she had run out of ways to amuse herself. She continued to add to the longest picture in the world, but she really wanted to run and yell and make a lot of noise to show how relieved she was that her father had given up smoking. One afternoon, Ramona was on her knees on the kitchen floor, working on her picture when Beezus came home from school, dropped her books on the kitchen table and said, well, it's come. Ramona looked up from the picture of Glenwood School she was drawing on the roll of shelf paper taped to the floor. Mr. Quimby, who had a dish towel tucked into his belt for an apron, turned from the kitchen sink. What's come, he asked. Although it was late in the afternoon, he was washing the breakfast dishes. He had been interviewed for two different jobs that morning. Creative writing. Beezus' voice was filled with gloom. You make it sound like a calamity, said her father. Beezus sighed. Well, maybe it won't be so bad this time. We aren't supposed to write stories or poems after all. Then what, then what does Mrs. Metzger mean by creative? Oh, you know, Beezus twirled around on one toe to define creative. What are you supposed to write if you don't write a story or a poem, asked Ramona, arithmetic problems? Beezus continued to twirl as if spinning might inspire her. She said we should interview some old person and ask questions about something they did when they were our age. She said we would run off what we wrote on the ditto machine and we would make a book. A ditto machine is how they used to make copies. Now we use a copy machine. She stopped twirling to catch the dish towel her father tossed to her. Do you know anyone who helped build a log cabin or something like that? Afraid not, said Mr. Quimby. We don't know anybody who skinned buffalo either. How old is old? The older the better, said Beezus. Mrs. Swink is pretty old, volunteered Ramona. Mrs. Swink was a widow who lived in the house on the corner and drove an old sedan that Mr. Quimby admiredly called a real collector's item. Yes, but she wears polyester pantsuits, said Beezus, who had grown critical of clothing lately. She did not approve of polyester pantsuits, white shoes, or Ramona's t-shirt with Rockaway Beach printed on the front. Mrs. Swink is old inside the pantsuits, Ramona pointed out. Beezus made a face. I can't go barging in on her all by myself and ask her a bunch of questions. Beezus was the kind of girl who never wanted to go next door to borrow an egg and who dreaded having to sell mints for the campfire girls. I'll come, said Ramona, who was always eager to go next door to borrow an egg and looked forward to being old enough to sell mints. You don't barge in, said Mr. Quimby, wringing out the dishcloth. You phone and make an appointment. Go on, phone her now and get it over with. 
Beezus put her hand on the telephone book. But what'll I say, she asked. Just explain what you want and see what she says, says said Mr. Quimby. She can't bite you over the telephone. Beezus appeared to be thinking hard. Okay, she said with some reluctance, but you don't have to listen. Ramona and her father went into the living room and turned on the television so they couldn't overhear Beezus. When Ramona noticed her father reach for the cigarettes that were not there, she gave him a stern look. In a moment, Beezus returned, looking flustered. I meant sometime in a day or so, but she said to come right over now because in a little while she has to take a molded salad to her lodge for a potluck supper. Dad, what'll I say? I haven't had time to think. Just play it by ear, he advised. Something will come to you. I'm going to, Ramona said, and Beezus did not object. So we're going to stop here because the next part's a little long. But we did learn who Mrs. Swink is. She's their neighbor. Remember that vocabulary word. So in the next part, we'll see what idea she gives to Ramona. Maybe it'll give you an idea too. All right, boys and girls, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.